Europa Universalis 4 is a game that has been tested by time and despite 10 years having passed, it's still a lot of fun for pretty much all of us watching this video right now, let's face it. That's why today I'm gonna do a very special run. I always wanted to do a role-playing run in which we make our very own nation that is gonna be plausible, so a custom nation we're gonna be doing that's the strongest nation, a very plausible nation, and we're gonna give it a little bit of a historical background. That's right, we're gonna do what if the Roman Republic was still around in 1444 and we're gonna visualize this Roman Republic with what would be the strongest idea sets for any nation in this game. If we get 5,000 likes on this video, I'm gonna do the second part of the campaign where we continue the Roman saga to see what exactly happened and why. Because that's right, I'm gonna make a little bit of a background to every single decision that we're gonna be taking in today's run and I'd like you guys to also let me know in the comment section what you think should happen to the Roman Republic or how you would envision a Roman successor state still being around in 1444, the size of the borders it would have, the type of institution it would have, and the type of ideas it should have overall as a nation. So let's go ahead and click custom nation. We're going to set Rome as the war target and by war target I mean our capital over here for the custom nation. Now I gave uh, a potential flag for the SPQR Chaticus Maximus nation. We got 800 points that we're using and as you can see we're using most of that already. So we are the Roman Republic and not the Roman Empire. Why is that? Well because I personally think that the only way that the Western Roman Empire would have survived is if it shrunk down and it went back to its origins as a republic after the uh, kingdom was ousted of course. Because as a smaller republic it would be a lot easier to maintain the virtues of of what made Rome Rome after all so that's why the uh, extent of our borders is not gonna be too much probably just the central bit of the Italian Peninsula in my potential timeline I'm gonna go ahead and say that after 476 the siege on Rome was a failure and the Romans somehow managed to get some generals from around the Empire to fight back against the Ostrogoths and retain some of the provinces here with maybe even some support from the Eastern Roman Empire. In our timeline, the Eastern Roman Empire had the exact same faith, however, keep that in mind. And after the uh, siege on Rome and the uh, capture back of some of the lands from the Ostrogoths, there was a truce between the Ostrogoths and the Romans, which meant that most of the uh, lands that were not captured by the Roman Republic were hard to take since the Ostrogoths dug in. And because there was a truce, which never officially finished, the Northern Italian bits became very much so Ostrogothic and whatever other Gothic kingdoms that succeeded. They had some civil wars, they had etc, etc, which led to uh, what we have in our timeline here in the northern bits. The Romans did have also the islands, partly because I would like to get some access into North Africa for expansion, but also because, historically speaking also, the islands, Sardinia and Corsica, were technically not really conquered. They had some self-rule, especially in Sardinia. That is why today Sardinian is a land language is a lot more closer to the original Latin is than the actual Italian is, the main dialect of Italian. That is because the development of the uh, Latin language in the island of Sardinia was not influenced as much as the development of the Latin language in the peninsula of, Itali uh, of Italy was, since they didn't have many invaders. They did have some, but not that many, and when the invaders did conquer them, they didn't really enforce or melt different cultures with the uh, people that lived in the island of Sardinia. So this is gonna be the max extent for our Roman Republic here and just to add maybe a little bit more spice we could say add the city of Venice as a breakaway enclave basically let's say uh, it was recaptured by uh, Roman sailors prior to that truce with the Ostrogoths and that's not it I'm gonna add some more custom nations in the northern bits I want to add an actual Ostrogothic successor state in the north and something else in the south as well but before we do that let's finish off our custom nation here so uh, we got Augustus Flavius is our leader. He is an absolute Chad Lord 666. He's gonna have a good modifier here though. So let's give him careful aggressive expansion minus 10%. Why not? We have Trash Luzerinus, which is a debuff that we start with here. Okay, he is our heir and he's probably gonna fall off the horse unfortunately very soon early in the campaign alongside uh, his mama over here Karen, which is a very typical Roman name in case you're wondering. We got the Roman sprite pack. This is because we uh, and by we I mean I got the Imperator Rome game 
before it came out, I pre-ordered it, so I got this unique uh, sprite pack. I know some people ask me when I did my Byzantine campaign, how come you have this? That's why. So it's a limited edition sprite pack. We are Roman Catholic Western, and we are a Crusader state. Why not? Why not? We uphold the virtues of the Crusades, okay? That being said, uh, we don't have uh, anybody to crusade against until we've gotten a little bit of a foothold in North Africa, which is going to be when the fun starts. Now, for our ideas, I did go ahead and I gave us a minus 20% core creation cost to make it faster and cheaper to core lands because we will be trying to reestablish our Roman legacy and maybe potentially restore the Roman Empire. We also have infantry fire plus one, which makes our infantry units ridiculously overpowered. I'm actually curious to test and see how fast we destroy enemy armies with the infantry fire pl plus one. That's why we also got calf fire and artillery fire plus one just for the extra shenanigans. We can also raid the coastlines of everybody, even nations with the same religion because, uh, and uh, hear me out, it makes sense. The Roman Republic not expanding too much in the 1000 years after the truce was done with the Ostrogoths did start a secret organization called the Virginicums Maximums, which are a band of pirates that go around the world, start a lot of weird snaps, and make other nations fight each other, okay? So this is to represent the Virginicans, okay? That's, uh, we can say you guys are those uh, Virginicans that, that just start conflict all over the comment section, okay? Trade efficiency and uh, dev cost reduction, pretty explanatory. Discipline as well. Morale of armies and admin efficiency plus 10%. I made this the last one because I don't want to have admin efficiency and core creation costs from the very beginning. If I do that, that would just be ridiculously overpowered. But then again, maybe I should put that as my first unlocked idea. Yeah, screw it. Screw it, man. And then we just don't get Venice. We get something else. We get, say, these islands over here. Because, remember, we have the Virginica Navy. So we have all the islands in the Mediterranean. You know what? Screw it. I'm getting all the islands in the Mediterranean. It's not the Venetians. It's us that have all the islands. We are the ultimate Roman naval trade republic that's secretly pulling the strings all around. Now, that being said, we're going to add a secondary custom nation in the north. The Ostrogoths, in fact, did not collapse. And we're going to set Gothic as the culture of these uh, people here, of course. We're also going to uh, change the tech group from Anatolian to Western because they are basically a Western nation by this point. Feudal nobility, however, and they are an empire. That is why I'm going to give them a lot of provinces all around. I'm going to keep Venice alive, though. I want to say that Venice is, in fact, the same that it is in our timeline a great trade republic but it's not as a naval savvy as uh, we are because we got some other lands but they still have some islands they got Negropon, they got uh, Eurobia and they got a few other areas there however the Ostrogoths do own all of uh, North Italy they also own all of Switzerland and even have this bit here so essentially Gothia is our biggest rival and one of the great powers in the European continent but to show the fact that uh, they are more peaceful than uh, they used to be a few thousand years ago, right? We gave them a lot of uh, development cost reduction modifiers. So we got dev cost reduction minus 10, all power cost minus 5, which means also dev cost minus 5%. Dev cost modifier overall minus 5 again, but they have discipline plus 10, morale of armies plus 20, artillery fire, war score versus other religions, core creation cost, admin efficiency. So they are a peaceful nation, but they can, of course, become very volatile. I'm actually going to change the color, though. Let's give them a proper gothic color. That looks a lot more gothic to me, if you ask. Unfortunately, the Ostrogoths could not take hold of all of Italy after being pushed by the Romans in the north. The southern parts of the Ostrogothic kingdom fell under the influence of the Muslim invaders, which still triggered in our timeline, right? Nothing else changed in the Muslim world. And they established a Roman Muslim imamat. This is the Sicilian imamat. And they are led by Tiberius the Saluzzo. They have the same sprite at us as they are Romans, but they are a few feudal theocracy, Ibadi, and let's change from Western to Muslim tech group. That looks a lot better to me. There we go. This should make for a very interesting and challenging start for us. So uh, let's go ahead and start our campaign. I'm genuinely curious to see how this is going to play out. <laughs> I might just get raffle stomped by uh, both of my enemies. If they ally each other, if Gothia and uh, the Sicilians ally each other, that might be a little bit of an issue, really. Okay, so we have 14,000 units. Oh, we got 27,000 from the get-go. What? Okay. Okay, 
that's quite a lot. How much development do we have? 320. Oh, alrighty. Okay, we actually started with quite a little bit developed. We are a great power, the fifth great power, right after Ming, Gothia, England, Ottomans, and then the rest are afterwards. Take note, because we uh, have our primary culture, a uh, lost culture, the Romans, every province that uh, is the same culture as our capital city is, will be our primary culture. So that's why all the Umbrian provinces we had have become uh, Roman, and uh, the same thing happened with the Sicilian name Amat. All the Napolitanian provinces they had have become Roman, but it doesn't happen the same with the Sicilian provinces or for us with the Tuscan and uh, Romagnol provinces, since they are not the primary culture. Keep that in mind in case you ever want to do your own custom nations. That is very important. We also do not have a proper mission tree, but we're going to get one once we uh, form some other nations. You know what I'm saying? To restore the Roman Empire, we need to have 425 provinces that are highlighted right now. So we're in for a little bit of a challenge, that is for sure. <laughs> Especially since it's going to be a little bit tougher getting into the northern bits, cracking the north and cracking the south for that matter. How many guys? They have 16,000. Okay, so we're going to try and push for an early war with uh, the southern and the northern enemies here. Let's see who else we can get as an ally. I'm honestly super curious to test out the units though, to see how uh, well that the uh, plus one fires fares actually. Plus we got the alliance with the Castilians and we're gonna get one with the Austrians soon as well So we should be a-okay here. Let's do our estates too whilst we're at it plus one mana privilege I'm gonna do basically a very standard estate I'm gonna try and keep my influence a little bit lower though because I plan on taking a lot of crownlands once I start getting my provinces in the Sicilian MMOD So I'm gonna give the rest of the privileges after I conquer the Sicilian We're gonna make the Goths and we're gonna make the Sicilians our enemies obviously and the Ottomans for that matter Why not we want to help out our Eastern Roman British brethren that have been suffering from the Ottoman scourge for so long now. So you might be wondering, you've been peaceful, you haven't expanded for a thousand years. Why all of a sudden would the Roman Republic in this hypothetical timeline decide that it wants to expand? Well, we have a new leader, Augustus, a 20 year old Chaticus, and his son fell off the horse. Unfortunately, he passed away. This triggered a chain of events because he found out that in fact it was Gothia that secretly ordered the assassination of uh, Luzarius. And not only that, but the Imam of the Sicilian Imamat is sleeping with his wife. Unfreaking believe This really pissed off Augustus. It pissed him off so much, he decided to uh, give out the patronage of the arts to get 25 prestige, and as such only have minus 20 prestige as a nation, which is significantly better. He also stabilized the country a little bit here. He also did not forget to send his trade fleet out in the world, and he started getting claims on Gothia and on the Sicilian Imamat just so he can punish them for the insolence that they did. Such a vile act has not happened in a thousand years and these people need to be punished. Not only that, but Augustus had a dream in which an angel came from the sky. Because remember, we're a crusader state, so uh, we're very Catholic. We're very, very Christian. The angel told them, it's time. It's time to reconquer the Roman Empire. If you don't do it now, the world's gonna end. So we don't want the world to end. We need to restore the Roman Empire. It's We have to do it in fact before 1550 that is the overall challenge for this particular game as well for that matter now i know what you're thinking ludy you're just making this shit up and uh to that i have to say uh shut up bro you you shut up right now man i'm having fun okay don't mess with me <laughs> all right let's see how much money we're actually getting minus 1.26 that's fine that's mostly because we have way too many forts let's delete some of these forts we got the one in cyprus we don't actually need the one in Rhodes. we don't actually need for that matter too any other fortifications we have around that we don't need uh should be about it oh we also have have this monument i just realized okay that's pretty cool i'm gonna uh, start converting every province here to roman though let's see which one would be cheapest another overall uh thing that we need to do is make sure that everybody is back to roman of course clearly that's uh, very important to us spare no expense we need those admin points to corrupt the southern bits that were taken from us and we're gonna get the help of the germans in austria to uh, destroy those uh, scumbag uh, goths let's see if they uh oh they are a part of the hre i just realized because i they're capital for the custom nation is in Milan so obviously they're going to be a part of the HRE that's going to be an issue it means I'm not going to be able to attack them I'm not sure if the shadow kingdom is going to affect them too much well it should technically because they're a nation within Italy right so hopefully they don't ally the Austrians and then they leave the HRE and then I can attack them a papal state no Rome is mine oh should I give uh, oh come on no screw you I'm not giving you Rome mine go away I know I know now as consequence I'm going to be suffering from it significantly aren't I let's see can we ally any 
anybody else of relevance. France. France surprisingly did not uh, rival the Castilians. So we can get an alliance. Why not? And I want to get a... Um, I'm not going to get an alliance. Actually, I'm just going to get a claim on the Byzantines. I'm going to vassalize them. It's also time that we bring our rebellious Eastern Roman friendos into the fray and uh, reintegrate them into the Empire, essentially. That's a, that's a really important plan for us. Because we have the capital, because we have Rome, that is, we um, we unfortunately um, have a little bit of a debuff, so we're probably never going to actually have any uh, papal influence, sadly. That being said, it seems like we have the CB, so we don't need to even get a claim on the Byzantines. We can just attack them right now. Okay, you know what? Uh, the Sicilians can wait. I'm going to be attacking the Roman, Eastern Roman Empire for that matter. I'm going to reestablish control over our Eastern brethren here. Let's also go ahead and get a uh, general. Uh, hopefully we got some decent one. We got 3212. What? With freaking 16 army tradition. That is insanely lucky right there. That is actually re That is. Brother, where's the cheats? Ludi, show me the manpower right now, bro. Show me, Ludi. I know you did it, bro. Keep coping. Keep coping. I love, I love the taste of the copium. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, baby. Keep doing it. All right, now let's go ahead and attack these bastards. I don't really care about Valachia and Serbia, but sadly, I have to fight them, so it is what it is. Let's make sure we have uh, naval supremacy here so we don't need to uh, worry about the Byzantines preventing us from attacking their vassal and them as consequence. The plan, of course, is going to be to vassalize Byzantium and take the province of Athens. Otherwise, it uh, breaks away as an independent nation if we don't take it for ourselves. And they just prevented my naval invasion, the scumbags actual freaking scumbags go ahead wipe out those troopers what the hell is this man oh my. why the hell did i ally france what's wrong with me bro fracking hell brother hopefully france is going to be able to handle this by themselves i don't need to stress about them too much should probably push for this war a little bit uh faster as well since uh there's a high likelihood the ottomans are going to be attacking byzantium i don't want them to take any of my beloved lands of course surprisingly the sicilian imamat has no friends just yet so once i'm done with my war here i'm going to do the holy war cb against them the showdown us here the mighty romans against the not so mighty romans that was the first battle oh my god plus one infantry fire is actually insane what the hell we stack wiped that whole army with less troops than they had what holy shit dude i did not expect it to be that strong early on in the campaign yep i mean hey at the very least my title is for once not clickbait okay we did have the strongest custom nation established here okay boys come on come on you gotta you gotta give it to me first non-clickbait looty title gotta mean something guys it has got to mean something and I'm serious now. Oh, and I forgot. I made these guys. <laughs> their primary culture is Gothic. So technically, they are in the Eastern Roman, uh, in the Greek <laughs> freaking culture group. Oh, boy. Hey, man. I did it because the Goths are Gothic, okay? It is it is what it is. What do you want from me, man? If anything, you can blame, uh, you can blame Paradox for that one, really. I'm curious how we're going to fare over here. How fast are we going to be able to destroy that? Okay, so let's see. We're doing double the freaking damage over there. Oh, my God. But I actually lost that. What? I mean, I, I kind of went up, you know, more troops than me and... And minus two dice roll. I kind of got a little bit cocky there. I should not have gotten that. So that's kind of on me. Right? All right, let's get the fuck out of there. Oh no, they're going to catch my troops. No. Unfortunately, actually, un could have been avoided. That was a mistake on my side. You know what that means, though? It means it's time to hire a free company, boys. The free company. Let's uh, get a loan as well. Boom shakalaka. And Recrutius Maximus. Free company, yes. Get him over in Athens. Merge him up with the main army. And let's start going back into the uh, Serbian lands. We got all the troops, actually, now. We're gonna send these bad boys to um siege down constantinople though so we finish this war a little bit faster and now let's try that battle again but uh you know it's kind of equal okay because they still have the upper hand since they have the mountain province there you go all right terrain matters so much in this game it's absolutely insane the fact that we lost that battle alone should clearly show you that terrain should be a lot more in mind whenever you fight your battles i know that a lot of people um write to me ludi how is it that i'm always losing my wars despite having more troops or whatever the snap honestly a lot of the times it can just be because of the terrain you're fighting on it can make such a massive difference really this really kind of makes me think for a second here if the roman empire was still around in the italian peninsula would they really just let the eastern roman empire you know get screwed over like that wouldn't they even interfere once kind of feel like we need to have a little bit of a backstory for that why would the eastern roman empire not get any help from the west well first off the west is a republic albeit just a name we technically are actually a monarchy but that being said, 
the West does have a grudge against the Eastern Roman Empire because the Eastern Roman Empire did not help the Western Roman Empire when it was getting attacked by invaders from all over the sides, right? And that hatred was secretly passed along from generation to generation. And whether we like to admit it or not, we kind of don't like the fact that they got bigger peepees than us too. Yeah, that's right. The bigger peepee, -pee, that's, that's a big problem for us. Now, this is also a big problem because I'm going to lose that. We got a freaking zero dice roll followed by a nine, but we did get died <laughs> Right, my bro. We got stack wiped. Okay. All right, buddy. Okay, Serbia. Ah, uh, you pissed me off. You actually pissed me off now. I'm going to have to wipe you out. You destroyed the free company, the greatest company in the world. That is not going to be acceptable. You know what? You pissed me off so much, I'm actually going to vassalize you. I'm going to make you my... Oh, whoa, whoa. I didn't co-belligerate them? No, I forgot to co-belligerate them. Well, that sucks. Oh, well. Let's go back. We're going to need to uh, peace out the Serbs first in that case. The great defeat against the Serbians by the Roman Republic will be remembered. Not only will it be remembered, but we shall feast on the bodies of Serbs after we've uh, vassalized them and uh, we've taken all their women. That's gonna be the plan here. Our main enemy has been Serbia all along, really. Wait, what? Why is Poland attacking? Oh, dude, Poland is, um, Polish conquest of Buzo. Poland's at war with the Valachians. Ugh. All right, I guess. Fair enough. Wait, no. I want to take the charge on uh, Valachia, though. Do they have the siege? They have the siege. No, I wanted to vassalize them, dude. Bro, that's so Sucks. It means I'm only gonna have the Byzantines as a vassal now. Feels bad. All of this could have been adverted by, uh, you know, not getting stack wiped by that Serbian Valachian army a few minutes ago. Feels really be at, man. 7% on that siege already. What? These guys are popping over here. God dang. Are we in charge of the siege? No, we're not. It's the end. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. All right. Let's go ahead and get a white piece with the Valachians then. The siege of Smedarevo. A day that shall live in infantry as always. Let's go ahead and get our money. I guess it's really just money that we can get. Nothing else. There you go. When the truce is over, we should be able to border them and wipe them out. Nice attempt over there by Xantium to take that back. But uh, yeah, we're not going to let you do that. Sorry. Sorry. Talk to wait what whoa 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 what hold up a second the tactica is the military manual collecting the experiences of the roman empire's military and naval warfare many tactics on the sea are still applicable to the navies beyond the medieval era this is a unique roman empire naval doctrine and we got that i'm assuming because our primary culture is roman that is so cool man that is actually so cool that the um, that bs that paradox added this as a feature what that is so freaking awesome man i'm gonna go for the trade power obviously but that's just cool to see See that we have that available i like that man i actually like that oh that's adorable sack of constantinople sack me harder baby sack me harder after 876 days the eastern roman empire has once more fallen under the control of the western roman empire or as it is known now the western roman republic or roman republic we're gonna take mesambria too so we can um so we can actually release bulgaria from it and there you go they unconditionally surrendered to me amazing they are disloyal, but after we improve relations with them for a little while, they should be back to loyal. Now let's go ahead and uh, get back to our uh, Sicilian Attackius, because they still don't have any allies. I'm assuming it's because they are Ibadi, so nobody wants to associate with them, clearly. And I'm going to take advantage of that and take as much land as possible. Can we fully annex? Probably not. 179. So it's going to be two wars to fully annex them. In the meanwhile, I'm going to get my claim on the Ottomans, because we're going to be attacking them soon with our reconquest of Corsibis, and I'm also going to be improving with isn't. We also got a little bit of crownlands from taking Athens and uh, Mesambria. That's a cool. It's actually very cool. All right, we got enough troops. Wait, they have 23? No shot. When did they recruit 23, man? Wow. Okay. Whatever, bro. Let's go. Let's go ahead and attack them. We got 26, so we got more than them. Go ahead and take out the capital. Uh, We might have to just uh, wait for them to push into our lands and then we just attack them or we just do this here. That's a mountain province, isn't it? Yeah, we're going to get baited. Aren't we? Hopefully, by the time that we uh, they get the reinforcements, we wipe them out. It's also bring our fleet here so we have uh, the extra bonus for sieging down their capital that was a stack wipe that is juicy as naps and yeah, military tech four even better goes to show that you know having a 666 leader is pretty freaking overpowered overall who would have thought am i right who would have thought really nobody would have thought now let's make sure we uh send these guys that need to get reinforced back to the back of at the back of the line here back to terracina so we don't uh, waste those troops for nothing in our timeline sicily did 
did actually become an emirate, right? The Sicilian emirate. Um, but it was basically restricted just to the Sicilian part. The Normans made sure that Sicilian uh, emirates is gonna stay in its place, <laughs> that's for sure. So it's really not that far-fetched saying that, uh, you know, you could have a Roman emirate should the Romans having still been around, right? End of the day, with the Ostrogoths having been uh, pushed into the north, whatever Ostrogothic influence might have been in the south would have been completely seized out. And the thing is that uh, even in our timeline, the majority of the population was in fact Roman in the Italian peninsula. It just basically had a minority Ostrogoths that were essentially in charge and some pockets of Ostrogothic population that got assimilated by the Roman majority population. That's why Italy is, you know, full of Italians that speak a Latin based language and not a Germanic based descendant language of the Ostrogothic language right all about the uh, numbers at the end of the day really wait we got 99% score score there ah, damn we can actually do the peace deal now then don't we how would we do the peace maybe we can do it like this yeah or actually maybe we can do it like this so we have access into um into the Cataro Durazzo areas if we want to get claims into there can we do this yeah, but that would look ugly. Yeah, no, this looks good. This actually looks good. Sicilian Imamad, the only people that care about it, and I don't give a single shanap. So let's go ahead and do the peace deal. So now we can just chill for a little while, core up all of these provinces, and um, get ready for the war with the Ottomans, obviously, too. Now we do have 12% crownland, so let's go ahead and give the rest of the privileges as well. We're going to go for this mission so we get the 50 admin. That would be pretty juicy. Standard estates, obviously. Diplo uh, reputation from the diplomats. Clerical education. Advice cost reduction and I'm not gonna give the um, expansion of zealotry just yet I will give it to, before I start my war with the Ottoman thing is I'm gonna be fighting a lot of Catholic nations as well right because I'm gonna be fighting wait what what oh oh I made the I made the goths orthodox why did I do that I think because the template that I used was my old Nicomedia template which was a uh, orthodox nation kind of didn't realize that hey on the bright side that means uh we're gonna be able to use our heretical show superiority see beyond them but they did uh, they did uh, ally constants and they're a part of the HRE so I still have to wait until they leave the HRE of course let's get and uh, send our troopers over to the uh, Balkan Peninsula we can also get the burger loans wait no I forgot I got five uh, privileges never mind we cannot get the burger loans I fucked up I fucked up big time hey hey Ron I did it I fucked up bro these guys are also allied to the Venetians I don't want to have to fight them just yet I do need to get uh, mercenaries so let's get a, a regular loan I guess and get a mercenary company the free company anybody have really good stats for the generals though six maneuver bro come on man morlocks have three siege oh, sorry two siege and three shock that's actually not so bad really screw it i'm getting the morlocks i'm getting the morlocks we're we're getting the morlocks back in town boys looks like the ottomans do unfortunately have the artillery pieces they got from the mission wait france also allied the castilians what oh my god that's a lot of nations on the side of look at this england's literally fighting half a free Europe right now. What the hell, man? Okay, we can also get Diplotech uh, for pretty early on. Admin's gonna be the issue here, that's for sure, because we had to core up a lot of stuff. I'm also gonna uh, wait a little bit longer. I don't know if we're gonna be able to piece these guys out now. Uh, but screw it, I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm doing it. I know I could have waited and I would have gotten flavors, uh, favor, sorry, with the French, but it's fine. It's not like the French are gonna help me out anyway, right? Now, we can lower our autonomy in our entire country, because our autonomy has been going up because of our unfortunate high amount of um well not high low amount of crownlands actually high amount of autonomy increase that's what i wanted to say my brain works in mysterious ways though that literally boosted us up for, by three ducats we gained three ducats from lowering our freaking autonomy that is ridiculous now look at that we went up to 420 monthly increase for manpower that is juicy really all right let's go with the Deus Volt here uh call in austria apparently we can do that sure that should uh divert the attention of the ottomans hopefully should we go for show superior priority though no no we're gonna go for the reconquest of course let's go with the corp we can do uh show superiority in the next war if anything oh they got a janissary coup over here ottoman janissaries rebelling don't mind 
if I do. I like seeing that. <laughs> Let's also try and push over to get the province of Gelibolu from them as soon as possible. Did they just delete the fort they had in Selene? Because this has a fort normally, right? I guess they did delete it. All right, we can also barrage the fortification in Gelibolu. We're going to do that because we want to take it ASAP, which stands for as soon as people in the chat going to be subscribing, eh? <laughs> That's what that means, really. Guess what I'm trying to say is you should probably hit that subscribe button. Maybe. I know you want to, but you 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 didn't do it yet. So why didn't you do it, bro? Just subscribe, okay? Come on, please. I'm just kidding. You don't need to subscribe. It's fine. It's okay. I'm not gonna silently judge you. Fine, fine. I probably will silently judge you, but it's still fine. Kind of. not. Ooh, avec les burgers. Yeah, sure, whatever. Okay, come on, give me the fortificationos. Give me the fortification. Honestly, the second that we have um, the province over here of uh, Gelibolo, we essentially won the war. We actually won the war. Why did I cross here? Actually, why? Here we go. Don't need to lose that unit for no reason, right? Hey, Austria is actually helping out, man. Even our Byzantine allies. I mean, vassals are helping. That's cool. Did I just set Tirhala as the war target? I'm pretty sure there's more development in uh, Edirne. Yeah, I should have done Edirne because you get a little bit of a uh, buff. You know, you, you it costs less to take the war target. So you want to aim for the one with the highest development. Actually, Tiharla is 12. That's not battles. It's the second best after Edirne, I guess. Eureka! We've gotten the Provincius. Okay, let me chase down the units they have on the Balkan side so we can wipe them out quickly. We will have to pass on over to Anatolia at some point, though, because we need to piece out their allies in order to get 100% war score. This is what I like to call a bait and switch. I'm waiting till they get movement locked. Then I pull my fleet out so it cancels their movement and I bring my fleet back in so the enemy fleet doesn't attack. I'm essentially time locking them here because they cannot cross onto my side as consequence. I love these little loopholes in the U4. They are the best. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. This is pretty cheesy, but it works. So shut up, okay? Meanwhile, in the south of Morea, our plus one infantry fire is destroying them. Oui, oui, avec les. And another thing I like doing is I let them have... Another thing I like doing is I let them bring over like uh, 10, 12,000 units so I can wipe them out. And then I let them bring another 10, 12 and another 10, 12. And I just uh, put my fleet back in whenever one of the armies passed. See, like this one here. So that I can essentially divide and wipe out their their uh, troops destroyed their manpower pool in the process they only down to 29 with 5k now so they're almost completely done for it this is something you can apply in a regular byzantium game as well by the way in case you're wondering okay what is up with this sicilian imamad declared war on tunis for the conquest of jerba i mean what didn't i just wipe out your entire freaking country how are you guys going to war all of a sudden are you just migrating over into north africa <laughs> that's what's going on isn't it the great migration of the sicilian imamad is happening pretty logically to think about right because they're getting pushed out of Italy they got to go somewhere they're going into the Islamic rich areas of North Africa future reconquered Roman African province you'll see just give it a little bit of time all right we got a deer so let's go ahead and attack the um, the expeditionary Ottoman troops here Boyashnokos yeah dead and we wiped out one of their cannons so that's really good as well and another 20,000 Ottomans got wiped da, 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 down to 11,000 and zero men power to da, 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 da. Ottomans are done we are gonna be wiping out everybody else here da, na, 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 na. I'm singing a Romanian national anthem what well technically that's not the real Romanian national anthem but it's fine just go along wait did they just trap 15,000 I mean 10,000 of their units on this they got 15,000 units left and more than half of their army is on Rodos this is quality AI as I like to call it right here boys absolutely quality AI I was just just realizing that this is actually a lot of fun. I haven't had this much fun in U4 in quite some time. I like to do like scenarios with custom nations of like alt history. Like what if that went like that? The other thing went like that. I feel like I would really personally enjoy that. Let me know if you guys would too. Maybe I can do more videos like these in the future, right? Slowly but surely the Roman Republic inched its way at reconquering its lost lands. What once used to be just tales passed down from ancient great-great-grandparents to the current chat lords of the Roman Republic shall once more be actual fact with the Roman Empire being almost on our doorsteps. I should become a writer. I should literally become a freaking right there. I I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's my career path right there. Oh, actually, they're close to giving me what I want. Do I want to bother for just 6% war score more when I basically have everything I want? I don't think I'm going to bother with it. Nope. No, sir. Uh, no! No! Oh! 
Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Oh my god, dude. I needed a province if Iskondria to attack Serbia. Oh my, how did I not see that, dude? I thought I gave this province to them. Oh, man, that's so dumb. Anyway, it's fine. It's fine. We got back all of the lands for the Byzantines so we can integrate them when the truce is over with them. Or in 10 years, better yet. Let's also get our claims on the Tunisians now. There you have it, boys. Dar ya have it. The first bit of the Roman expansion is done. We have recovered the Greek lands. And once we've gotten our manpower a little bit up, and once we got our manpower back up a little bit more, we're going to be attacking into the north and we're going to finishing off what's left of the uh, Sicilian Imamat, the heretical scumbag of the Sicilian Imamat to be more precise. Let's uh, encourage a religious unity to make it a little bit quicker converting these lands as well. So on average now, it's going to take around 40 months to convert that. That is very slow still. Now, I do hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm actually having a ton of fun, so I'm going to play this out, see how it goes. And if you want to see the second part of this campaign, then uh, you know what you need to do. And hey, until the next time, check out my awesome Brandenburg run. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to to do this without all your support.